to our presenters to introduce themselves. Everyone, my name is Russell Crane, and I'm product marketing for Transceiver Interface at TI. I focus on CAM and LEN transceivers. Um, also joining me today is uh, Bershank Shukla. He is uh, our systems engineer and who will be available to answer any of your questions uh, throughout my presentation uh, via the chat box. So uh, feel free to ask questions away, uh, and Prashank will do his best to answer them real time. <clears throat> so for today's agenda, uh, I'd like to give you a brief history of CAN, where we've come from, where we are now, and even where we're going. Uh, then we'll talk about signal, uh, CAN signal improvement capability, also known as SICK. And then finally, I'll share a couple of new products with you um, that do support the signal improvement capability. So with CAN, uh, just to point out that TI is not new to this particular market. Uh, we've shipped over 2 billion units uh, worldwide for CAN and LEN and automotive transceivers. And that includes to um, almost every OEM and tier one uh, in the world. Uh, all of our devices are fully uh, compliant uh, with the necessary emissions and have the necessary OEM approvals, uh, and that includes these CAN SICK devices that uh, we'll be talking about today. So CAN bus has come, uh, come from a, a long way back. Uh, today it's a very uh, ubiquitous uh, interface that's used across many different applications whether it be consumer applications, enterprise, like uh, uh, elevators, industrial is a big play for uh, CAN, agriculture, commercial vehicles, asset tracking, and uh, passenger vehicles, uh, of course, is uh, uh, one of the bigger reasons why we're here today. So if you look at where CANs come from, right, we started out at 500 kilobits per second. And uh, with CAN FD, that moved up to one megabit, two megabits, and even five megabits per second. Uh, CAN SICK addresses the five megabit, uh, can be used across all data rates, but as you'll see, it's most useful at the higher data rates or when you have a very complicated topology. So first things first, you may hear uh, different, uh, different terms for this technology. CAN signal improvement capable, CAN SICK, and even CIA 601-4. And I'll, we'll add another one here in a moment. Uh, all of these mean the same thing. Uh, it is ringing suppression for the CAN signal. So here's the, 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 uh, the newer specification that you'll have to memorize. So the CIA 601-4 is the uh, CAN FD signal improvement uh, specification done by CAN and automation. You can see here in the CIA 601-3 uh, is also a part of the node and system design uh, for, um, for CAN. And you can see here that both of these specifications will be merged into the standard 11898-2 updated for 2023 uh, from the uh, ISO organization. So um, another one to remember there. Now, although the CAN uh, has moved from CAN to CAN FD to CAN 6, uh, the great thing about this technology is that it is still fully pin-for-pin -pin compatible between uh, CAN, CAN FD, and CAN SICK. So no bomb requirements. If you're using our TCAN 1044A today, you can easily move to 1462. No bomb changes, no software changes required. Um, and uh, all of our devices, as I mentioned, are completely uh, certified and OEM approved and ready for design in. So we're going to give you a brief uh, uh, demonstration uh, as much as we can on a uh, WebEx here of what CAN signal improvement capability looks like. So what we have here is a, is a star topology. This is actually the topology that 
uh, the uh, CNS organization utilizes for its compatibility uh, to CAN-6. This is uh, 16 nodes, and you can see here the cable links are all very different, right? So different links uh, and uh, 16 nodes. And what we're gonna do is we're going to send a uh, CAN-FD package at two megabit per second, and then we're gonna send a CAN-6 packet at two megabits per second. And then I'm gonna show you, we'll show you the results here on the next slide. But I'm also gonna show you uh, the same data traffic at five megabits per second. So here on the left, you can see a standard CAN uh, FD transceiver transmitting at two megabits per second. CAN H and CAN L lines, you can see, uh, there's excessive ringing here um, going on. Down here on the TXD and the RXD lines, you can also see this drop or this glitch on RXD. Now, this is not a perfect signal as you can imagine. However, uh, it is most likely uh, satisfactory. Now, this is uh, depends on the topology, right? If you have a bigger network, a more complex network, you may still need SICK uh, with those. You can see that this glitch is here, but it does uh, clear itself before the next transition. So uh, again, no issues really with this data. However, if you look over here at the CAN-6 slide, the noise is, uh, the ringing is almost uh, gone, as well as the glitch has been totally uh, remedied and is no longer an issue. This gets greatly amplified at five megabits per second. And if you look, <clears throat> excuse me, if you look across the industry, Although CAN-FD can support up to five megabit per second, very few if uh, um, outside of private networks or programming, uh, end of line programming, do folks use five megabits per second. And that's mainly due to the ringing uh, that you see here on the left-hand side. So with can sick, it definitely opens up the ability to run at faster, speeds, longer distances, and more complex topologies. The ringing here is greatly amplified, and now this glitch on the RXD pin is now uh, much more problematic as it is crossing over this transition. Uh, again, can sick removes the majority of that ringing, and again, completely takes care of that, uh, that glitch. Uh, this signal would be definitely problematic uh, and cause uh, signal integrity issues, um, where the CAN-6 version, you would not see the same issues. So the way that the, um, the CAN in action group defined um, signal improvement capability um, is basically to uh, reduce uh, the amount of timing uh, that is uh, required to synchronize your clocks, right? So CAN-FD addresses it by limiting the asymmetry. Uh, our asymmetry that you can see here is uh, greatly reduced. And again, you know, can sick can be used at 500 kilobits, one megabits, all the way up to five megabits per second. Uh, you will get the most uh, uh, benefit, as you've seen, at five megabits per second. So this, uh, this reduced uh, uh, symmetry here basically uh, reduces the, uh, the sample point uh, and uh, provides additional timing for that signal uh, to settle. But in, uh, you know, layman's terms, this mostly is, uh, is pure ringing suppression technology. And this is ringing, tech, uh, ringing suppression that TI has always had in our uh, CAN transceivers and LIN transceivers. Uh, however, this is a little bit further along uh, than, than our previous ringing suppression. So if you know anything about CAN, you know that it's everywhere in the passenger vehicle, as is the LIN bus as well. This is just a, an example of where you will find CAN and LIN transceivers in the, in the automobile. And we're talking about, you know, upwards of 60 
nodes uh, for a, you know, a high-end vehicle. Uh, and that number keeps getting more and more as we're starting to move to more of a zone controller uh, architecture. And then you know, you're also seeing additional developments uh, on the LEN side for, uh, for lighting as well. And just a, a quick promo there, we also have a full line of LEN transceivers uh, available to you as well. So when you look at the different applications that CAN supports, right, where is CAN 6 going to really help? And some of those uh, applications are, are here, such as gateways, body control modules, zone controllers, phone as a key, uh, car access. We're really seeing a big uptick in the telematics and the digital um, um, cluster, as you can imagine, with all of the, um, the HEV and EV vehicles with the big displays, no longer analog dials on your, um, on your dash. CAN SICK will be terrific for there. Uh, you would even may see that more in the infotainment um, or, or increased video uh, frame rates, as well as in ADAS, especially for front cameras, radars, anything that's going to have continual data uh, requirements uh, for, that, uh, for that streaming and in order to make any you know, adjustments to uh, the vehicle in traffic. So we have two devices that uh, we've announced this week, and that's the TCAN 1462 and the TCAN 1463. Both of these devices are fully AEC Q100 qualified. They both support CIA 601-4, which you know is signal improvement capable. And you can see there as well that they also offer 58 volt bus fault protection that is an increase over our competition that generally supports anywhere from 42 to 48 volts. And we do support temperature ranges up to 150 C junction. Now on the left is the TCAN 1462. It is an 8 pin 5 volt CAN transceiver. We also have optional VIO availability for this device with support of 3.3 volt and 5 volt IO. We have also added 1.8 volt IO uh, to be able to do that level translation for the lower power 1.8 microcontrollers that are uh, becoming prevalent in the industry. The device does support a low power standby and is available in three separate packages. Our standard SOIC package, the VSON uh, package with uh, uh, no leads. And we also have a SOT package, as you can see there on the left, that basically merges the two technologies. This new package from TI is the, uh, the world's smallest CAN automotive qualified transceiver. And so lots of folks do not care for, uh, don't, whether don't have the manufacturing capability or don't have the optical inspection needed to utilize the VSON and take advantage of that small size that you see there. Well, the SOT provides kind of a best of both worlds uh, solution by offering, still offering the leads, but providing a smaller footprint than even the VSON. This package is available across numerous uh, CAN transceivers from, from TI. And we also have it for our 14 pin package that we'll talk about here. This device is fully pin for pin compatible uh, with our previous versions, as I mentioned before, but uh, it is also pin for pin compatible with, comp with competing devices. The TCAM 1463 is a 14 pin five volt CAN transceiver that adds in weight, inhibit, and sleep function uh, to the TCAN 1462. It also is available in three separate packages, including the, uh, the SOT package uh, here. One thing I failed to mention on the eight pin is that if you do utilize the SOIC today, 
and want to take advantage of the SOP package. You can easily try that out uh, with a dual layout. Uh, we have documentation on TI.com that'll showcase how you can lay out your board to have this thought package inside of the footprint of the SOIC. So it's a great way uh, to test out that thought package as well as to increase your availability um, by basically putting in a dual supply based on package. Both of these devices are sampling today. You can find them on TI.com. We will be in production in the middle of summer on both of these devices. So we look forward to working with you and uh, uh, on CAN FD and CAN SIC applications. Some places that you can go for some more information. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, TI.com. Uh, our product folders are up. You'll see the data sheets. You'll have the ability to request samples and to um, <clears throat> browse some of the other documentation, such as this, uh, this white paper here that was done by one of our systems engineers that uh, really goes into a lot more detail than I can in such a short time uh, on signal improvement capability and how it unlocks the potential of CAN FD transceivers. As I mentioned, they've always been able to do five megabits per second, but only now can you really see the real potential of it via the ringing suppression. There's also a, a very a, a small, short training video that goes into pretty much the same information that you're hearing today, uh, but feel free to kick, click on that link as well. There's also a, uh, a Precision Labs training course on CAN and LEN technology in general. And then lastly, feel free to browse our full line of CAN and LEN transceivers. Uh, we've been, as I mentioned, doing CAN for a long time. We have many different solutions, and uh, many of them are taking advantage of our latest and greatest uh, silicon process technology. And uh, they're built right here in Richardson, Texas. And with the announced RFAB2 coming online uh, later this year, we'll also be able to increase our output on these devices as well as our LEN and SBC products as well. I thank you for your time and look forward to working with you, answering any other questions uh, on uh, CANSIC or any of our devices in transceiver interface. Thank you. Thank you so much, Russell. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them via chat. We'll hang on the line for uh, a minute more, and if we don't see any, we'll conclude today's session. Thank you, everybody. Okay, it looks like we can wrap today's session up. Russell, again, thank you to you and team for an excellent WebEx. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.